Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we show what power spectral density or PSD units mean for a random vibration simulation. The random vibration analysis in SOLIDWORKS simulation can accept base excitation input in the form of power spectral density or PSD as shown here. There is a base excitation in the vertical direction of 1 g squared per hertz scaled to this graph of a PSD input curve. Here is a sample input PSD graph, which is a particular military testing standard. Many people have asked about the units of PSD and what they mean. The units do not appear to have a physical meaning, especially with the use of g squared per hertz. By convention, the units are written as g's, but are actually GRMS or root mean square. So here's a small story about how to get to the power spectral density units. Suppose you have a sample of an acceleration time history in G's like this, and you want to estimate the response of the structure to the acceleration. You could use modal superposition as a transient analysis in simulation, but you'd have to enter all the data of which there could be hundreds of thousands of points over the time span. Additionally, you'd only get 5 seconds worth of response of the structure. Instead, you can use the random vibration analysis in simulation. You can obtain the output as the root mean square or RMS response of the structure in terms of displacement and stress. There are some other criteria to consider the input as random, which we'll cover in later quick tips. For random vibration, the question is how to get the signal characterized as a PSD for input. Here's a manual calculation example using a technique called the band pass filtering method. The acceleration data can be passed through a filter to isolate the frequencies from 10 to 20 Hz, and you get this graph. We need to calculate something called the overall level or GRMS of this frequency band. You can calculate the GRMS by using this little equation. Take all the data points, xi, square each one, and add them all together. Now divide by the number of data points. Now take the square root and you get the GRMS value or overall level of the frequency band. We put this information in a table like this. Here's the filtering range, here's the center of the frequency band, and here's the GRMS. We square the GRMS and place it in this column. Now we divide the GRMS squared by the bandwidth and put the value here. That's the PSD value for that band of frequencies. Let's go back to the original time history acceleration, but this time filter from 20 to 30 Hz, and you get this graph. We'll do the same as before and calculate the overall level, square it, and divide it by the bandwidth and enter that into the table. Then we'll go back to the original signal again and filter from 30 to 40 Hz to get another graph. We'll do the same as before and complete the table. The items in the last column of the table are the PSD values for particular frequency ranges. They indicate the energy of vibration within that particular frequency band. All we do now is plot these values on another graph. And voila, now you have your PSD input curve for simulation. Notice the graph has vertical axis units of g squared per hertz and is plotted against the center frequency of the band in hertz. Many thank yous go to Mr. Tom Irvine of VibrationData.com for examples and materials used in this video. In this video, we've shown what the power spectral density or PSD units mean by way of an example calculation.